Hello there. Uh, I'm going to review here a uh, paddle board from TC Electronic. It's uh, their 13 new analog paddles that they have released in October and I may be the only person in the world who's got the whole paddle board uh, and is not working for TC, that is. Um, uh, I actually got a phone call from TC Electronic. They called me like, hi Roman, we would like you to review our paddles. Do you have time? I said, uh, you know, uh, as much as I would love to, I, I don't really have time and uh, I'm quite busy. Um, okay, that's a lie. Anyway, I won this paddleboard in, uh, in a competition that TC had uh, at the end of the year. It was a Christmas giveaway and I entered into this with a video called Please TC for Christmas, which you can find here or in a description below. So, uh, it's 13 new pedals when they came out in October. I was pretty much interested in how they are going to sound on the bass. And TC Electronic released a few videos uh, demoing uh, these pedals. And as much as those videos are well made, I don't think they're informative enough. Even there's a guy called, I think, Ariel Garcia or something like that. I think he's a um, bass player for TC and he's from Spain. He also did a few reviews, but none of them are really that informative. So having this paddle board, I decided to um, review each paddle, tell you what the knobs are for and how do they sound. So let's get to it. Oh yeah. Gear review. Gear review. I've got the uh, Kingston Z series bass, a five string bass from MTD, which is a shortcut for Michael Tobias design. I've got the BH550 TC Electronic bass head and TC Electronic K212 cap. That's what I'm gonna review this for. I also use Looper from the Flashback 4. Let's go through the pedals. The very first one I'm gonna review is the Rusty Fuzz pedal. So it's got three very simple knobs. It's got the volume, which is kind of self-explanatory. It's like, um, if you're in the middle, like 12 o'clock, you're with a Unity game, but you can also boost or cut the volume. You've got the fuzz, which determines how much of the fuzz you have in your sound. And tone stands for the color of the fuzz. If you go counterclockwise, it's gonna be more... Uh, you got a more darker sound and if it's fully clockwise you get brighter sound so let's record the riff <laughs>
So the next pedal is Cinder's Overdrive. It also has three knobs. So uh, it's got the volume knob, which is pretty similar as with the fast pedal. Then you've got the drive. So that's essentially, that's essentially, <laughs> so that's essentially how much overdriven is uh, your signal. And then you've got the tone knob, which uh, is the high end. So how much of the treble you're gonna have. So it's kind of like you can cut or boost uh, the higher frequencies in your bass sound. Um, so let's get to playing. I'll be playing a sort of a groove riff. Another pedal in the overdrive section or in the dirt section is the Grand Megas Distortion. So uh, it's got three knobs. So it's got the uh, volume, then we've got the uh, gain, which is similar as the drive with the cinders. It's the amount of gain in your signal. So the more gain, the dirtier the pedal. And then you've got the tone, again tone cuts or boosts the treble, so the higher frequencies. I'm gonna play a riff that I actually have a band called Sleep of the Lip and we have released uh, our first EP. It's gonna be two years now. The time really flies by. And we have a song called Angels of Rock and Roll and um, there's a solo part where, um, where I play this kind of riff or whatever it is. So I'm gonna use this for the Grand Megas distortion. So let's do it. Okay, almost forgot it.
next pedal in the dirt section is the Fangs Metal Distortion. It's got a few more knobs, so uh, let's go through the knobs. We've got the volume, then you've got the gain, then you've got the bass and treble, both of which can boost and cut your bass and treble frequencies. And in the middle, we have a toggle switch where you, can, where you have three positions where you can go. So you've got the raw, fat, and scoop, whatever it may mean, this is related to the mid frequencies. So you can adjust your mids. I'm, I haven't found out what these names stand for, but you can judge. Okay, uh, we're gonna play a little heavier groove now. I'm on a C sharp. I'm gonna play a riff, one of the newer tracks from my band. This is a song actually called Pilgrim in Doubt. It's a, in a 3-4 time signature, so let's record it. talked about is the Rush Booster. It's got a very similar logo to the band Rush, which is kind of nice. Uh, well, there isn't much to say about a booster. It's got one knob, which is the volume knob. So a booster is, I think, a tool more for guitar players as you can uh, turn it on when you, for example, play a guitar solo. I have used it in the combination with other pedals. I'm not going to demonstrate it individually. I think you can imagine what this pedal does and I've demonstrated it for a little while. Okay, we're good. The next pedal is the force field compressor. Now, compressors are generally pretty difficult pedals to review as um, compressor is very... Um, it's hard to hear compression. If you have a good compressor, you usually shouldn't be able to hear it 
only when you have really very very heavy compression uh, I think I'm gonna cover everything I know about compressors and everything I've studied so far in, in another video so don't forget to subscribe this compressor is a pretty easy one it's got three knobs so it's got the sustain attack and level so the sustain knob is essentially amount of compression so uh, you can go from subtle to very heavy or extreme compression then you've got the attack release attack release generally stands for how fast the compressor kicks in so if you have uh, the attack set as slower it means that you're gonna have more staccato tones so to speak it's like uh, it's, it's gonna have more attack now if the attack is fast your notes are connected more joined together yeah okay and then there's the level knob so a level is essentially the the volume when you have very heavy compression you can lose some of the volume that's what the level is for a uh, level knob interacts with the sustain knob so if you change sustain you should also change the level knob and so on so let's get to playing <laughs>
as I said, it's kind of difficult with the compressor. Now, this compressor can also serve as a booster. Uh, when you are setting a compressor, you should always have one thing in mind, and that's that uh, generally compressor should have the same volume as your normal plane. So that when you engage the compressor, it is not louder or quieter, it just evens out your plane. When this compressor is put to extreme settings, it can distort your signal a little bit, so especially if the sustain is fully clockwise and when the level is also fully clockwise. So you should be careful with this. You can use it as a booster, but generally compressor should even out the peaks to make louder parts quieter and quieter parts louder, then you should find unity gain between the volume of the pedal and volume of your amp. So I'm not very good at slapping, but um, compressors are generally uh, used for slapping quite often, so let me just try. If it sucks, then well, Sorry for trying. One more thing I'm gonna play is a very classic riff from the 60s. This is from the band called Cream and the, and the song is called Sunshine of Your Love. It's a very classical riff and I'm just gonna play it and run it through the dirt pedals and then we're gonna move on to the modulation section. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
so I got a little lower on this string. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah, baby! Stage is yours, mister. Okay, the first videos are usually difficult to make. Going one into another more uh, fluently or more mm, difficult to say. It's like your playing is more um, connected, so to speak. So it's like warmer, it's more... Um, it's very difficult to explain. How to explain that? Help me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we have a technical issues here. So the... Ah!